All right, might as well go ahead and get started. I don't have a ton of new material this week. Um, we had some issues last weekend with inventory servers, and as a result of, of problems with the servers, we ran into some issues with people's accounts getting messed up. And, uh, you know, long story short, it turns out that some of our other uh, services don't really respond well when inventory isn't behaving. Um, so I've been mostly pulled into doing some investigation related to that. Nothing new on the Animesh front. Um, and so I don't really have anything to report there. Uh, let's see, I see Ryder's here. Ryder, do you want to talk about uh, Eep stuff? Well, we just uh, we just put out a new uh, a new PV. Um, I'm hoping the next uh, I'm hoping the next one will be RC. There's still a couple bugs that have to get uh, have to get knocked off. Um, that's uh, that's sort of the uh, the that's sort of all I have to report this week. What will people see if they get the new PV? Is it uh, it's basically just bug fixes at this point? Mostly just bug fi fixes at this point. Yeah. Um, I think the the only the only new I, I think the only new thing I uh, snuck in there was uh, turning off the uh, on and off the sun and moon beacons from the edit. But you know that's just a a convenience. Any comment on how close you think we are on uh, getting the remaining issues sorted out? Very, very close. Yay! Uh, yay! Um, yeah, I, 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 I tend to channel Oz here with, uh, with, with, with announcing dates, but, but uh, it's it, it's imminent. That sounds good. Um, and the back end support, the simulator changes, are those deployed everywhere yet or is those, there still those are those are deployed uh, on uh, uh, let's see blue steel and uh, La Tigra. Um, I want to get um, uh, which means that uh, which I want to get the the viewer into RC before I uh, before I clog up the rest of the pipeline. And just in case, uh, just in case, w with uh, wider testing, we get uh, uh, wider test. Uh, wider testing unveils something uh, that needs to be fixed on the same okay. side. Yeah, that, that was my question. Really, was the ordering if um, you know whether we're going to get the viewer out to RC first? Um, yeah, I want the uh, I want the viewer to RC before we uh, before we. Uh, uh, take over more of the grid. Yeah. Okay. And if somebody gets that RC but isn't actually trying to do EAP stuff, the fact that they're in an unsupported region isn't really going to affect them, right? Right. Right. Okay. They, they, should, they should really see no difference. They should see no difference. Uh, yes, Beck, if it does, that's a bug. Uh, yeah, that would be bad. Um, good thing to check out if it's happening. I've been using, I've been using the, uh, the viewer, ex uh, ex pretty much exclusively for a couple months now, and I go to a lot of regions that aren't, uh, that, uh, that are not, of uh, uh, well, uh, that are that are not EAP, compa uh, EAP compatible. Okay, sounds good. Uh, so let's see what else is going on. Um. Bakes on mesh, you've 
So we've heard this one before, but it turns out we need to do another appearance service update to fix the uh, black skirt issue. And uh, I think Anchor is out this week, so we'll be. Uh, I think they're. I think QA is looking at that, and we'll be, uh, you know, continuing to push that forward once he gets back. Um, let's see. Anything else to report? Not really. We've got a whole bunch of viewers that are like almost but not quite ready to go out, so we're just kind of pushing on them and hoping uh, somebody gets out the door soon. Um, but the others are, are less, I guess, content-y. Um, there's one viewer that lets you do better controls for estate access management. Um, folks will probably be interested in that. There's one that's just dealing with um, the way we do crash reporting. It's switching to use a tool called Bug Splat. Um, and there's a bunch of main stuff, which currently the main stuff includes uh, the some some uh, mesh uploader improvements from Firestorm. Um, it's possible we're going to split that out into its own dirt viewer, but uh, we'll keep you posted on that one. If it's decided. Um, one advantage to doing it that way would be that we also have a bunch of other requests for uploader improvements, and that would let us uh, things. So, I don't know, I guess that's about it for updates. Anything people want to ask about, talk about, show off, whatever? I see we've got more Animesh doggies. That's always a good trend. I remember Lucy's had this one for a while. I didn't remember we had a yeah, second one hanging out. Pivot point upload. I know the jury you mean, and I don't know where that is. I think that, did that require simulator work? I think it did. I'd have to dig that up. I'm going to make a note about that. Oh, that's right. We talked about the texture upload thing at our last uh, feature triage. Um, it uh, yeah, it seems like something that uh, I, I don't know how much work is required on the back end since we're trying to allow multiple image uploads with one um, with one payment. That part might get a little tricky, but uh, it would be it would be a nice thing to have. So speaking of disappearing fixes, someone pointed out to me that I've got a couple of fixes in the um, in the old Animesh repo that never got pulled into anything else. Uh, this was related to the um, trying to throttle the rate of uh, of uh, complex avatar complexity updates for uh, uh, for for avatars and Animeshes. Um, and uh, I think that one just never got pulled into any release-bound train. Um, and then I think Firestorm, in the meantime, has decided to do things slightly differently anyway. So I don't know how that's all going to wind up going. But what I'll probably wind up doing is pulling those changes into the, the Muscadine thing, which is where I'm doing the NMH2 work when I get time.
at some point I may move the complexity to the big service, but I don't think that's going to happen right away. So we still kind of have to decide. It's you know, back as as you notice, it's there's kind of a trade-off between giving people instant feedback and just spamming them with useless update messages. Um, and, and the problem is a little tiny fiddly stuff like um, uh, you know, some some alpha thing getting cycled by a script can can trigger lots of updates that they they're not very salient. I mean, they're not what you're expecting to see, and they're not related to anything that you're consciously doing. So I guess you kind of have to choose your lesser annoyance, whether people are more annoyed by not having the exact value all the time or whether they're more annoyed by being pestered by useless messages. Yeah, they all set prim parameters fast. Um, uh, there may be cases where that's that's uh, going at, you know too fast as well, but it's a, a different topic. Yeah. Are you more concerned about the overhead? Yeah, I mean we are doing a fairly detailed pass through the through a lot of data structures to get those values, so. I can imagine if you're doing it too often, it's going to get annoying. Now, surely you could you could throttle it to you know just the frequency of the updates. You know, don't don't recalculate it more often than every you know n seconds. You know, even if you tell people about every every change, no matter how minor, you still don't have to tell them that often. Are they reporting a minimum or a maximum? Well, like, I guess, but I mean, how accurate do you need to be about this stuff? I mean, you know, you, we could give people, uh, you know, give them their sort of current height in millimeters as, to, as they're playing all their animations, too, but I mean, it's not really telling them anything useful. My guess is, in the normal case, you know, the the changes that are coming from the prim param settings aren't large enough that it especially matters whether you're hitting the minimum or maxima. But I mean, maybe there are cases where the spread is actually significant. Yeah, if I recall correctly, the change I'd put in had some kind of a delta, so it's like any time you drifted more than, you know, X percent above or below your current value, it would update the display. But it would also not not update the calculations more often than, you know, every help, every some number of seconds. Um, yeah, I don't know. As I say, it's kind of a lost... Uh, change right now, but I'll, I'll pull that into the uh, into my kind of main line of development and take a look at it next time I get some time, which is probably next week at this rate.
Uh, okay, yeah, the intent was that it would uh, it would look at the cumulative effect. Um, so I'll, I'll have to make sure that it's actually working that way. Yeah, if, if you could kind of sneak up on it by little deltas, then that would be a that would be a pretty easy exploit. Object animated count tells you uh, if an object is animesh or if you're wearing animeshes or how many animeshes. Animated slots available tells you how many additional openings you have on yourself. Uh, those I mean, those would probably be easier to do than some other things, but I mean, the whole the whole mess isn't going to get out until we've got uh, you know another another viewer release that uh, has to kind of cycle through. So, I mean, you know, it, it is a simulator change. So, I guess we could if we implemented that, then you could, you could get it without a viewer release at all. I assume you're just trying to figure out whether it's possible to attach a, uh, an animation when somebody tries to do that. So how would you use that in a script? It seems like um, you know the process of, of attaching something is it's done through the UI, you know, kind of independent of script. So how do you sort of intercept that or or kind of get ahead of it or whatever? Well, I mean, currently the the UI shouldn't let you try to attach an animesh if you already have the maximum number. Actually, you can't always check that. It doesn't always know whether something is animesh. But if you do try to do it, then you'll get an error from the server. Um, so, what what stage is the is the script going to get involved? Is it going to actually trigger the attachment, but only based on checking the condition? Okay, you're talking about attachments triggered by scripts. Gotcha. It's not going to affect the behavior of, of people who try to like do an attachment by right clicking. Temp attachment fails, but owner change still occurs. Ooh, that's not so good. Is there a Jira for that? Seven seven oh two. Are there plans to have attachment points for animesh? Uh, no, 
don't know yet. Uh, one of the things I'm going to do in the current uh, Animesh follow-on project is is do some investigation into that and see if there's a, if there's a good mechanism for for allowing you know attachment points or or something like attachment points. Um, having attachment points that work exactly the same way as they do for avatars would be a problem because. Um, just because the the implementation of of the two is is quite a bit different, but um, I'm I'm wondering if there might be some other way we could achieve a similar effect. Yeah, assign an attachment point to an existing link. What what I was wondering about is as one possible way, and as I say, I haven't really done a lot of investigation yet, but yeah, one possibility would be, you know, an animesh object is is still a link set and the you know, the quote unquote attachments are, are still members of the link set, but they're just flagged in such a way that they get rendered in the appropriate position as it you know, attached to the appropriate attachment point. Um, so it wouldn't affect, you know, they would still count against your complexity limits the same as if they were being treated as attachments. And, uh, you know, they would still be part of the link set like other element object. But, um, you know, you, you could achieve the, uh, at least the desired positioning. Um, that doesn't necessarily give you the capability to do everything that you can with uh, with attachments on avatars, though. Create a completely new animesh from scratch. Uh, okay, so what does that let you do that you can't do currently? I mean, you know, any, anytime you've got rigged meshes, you can make them into animeshes pretty easily already. Oh, you want to be able to make uh, sort of animesh-like things using um, using a collection of unrigged objects like, I don't know, like my current avatar. Could be an animesh. Yeah. Yeah, that would be kind of a, uh, kind of a cool use case. And I, I think that, you know, with the, the approach I was talking about, I think that would probably work if, if that turns out to be feasible. Anyway, yeah, nothing definite, it, but it is on my list of uh, stuff to look at. But if if the um, you know if the animesh attachments are actually part of the animesh link set, then they would basically count toward the complexity the same way that they do today. Um, which is to say that basically the limits apply to apply to rigged polygons. Um, I mean, you can already have a static mesh as part of your animesh, um, and I don't think it affects your triangle accounting. It's just that since it doesn't actually follow your joints, it, um, you know, it's, it's not really animated. It's just stuff that kind of floats along with your avatar. So yeah, that that is a question whether it would um, whether it would be a problem if people added a lot of those and uh, wound up being bad for performance.
Uh, anyway, it's all uh, it's all hypothetical at this point. W once I actually get some time to do some tests with this stuff, we can we can talk about it more. So I'm curious what people think about Animesh as as a you know method for making kind of mobile characters things that kind of wander around on their own um there, you know there's been some discussions about npcs and trying to trying to do pathfinding versus non-pathfinding methods um just curious if anybody here has you know done enough experimentation with any of those approaches to have a conclusion i mean you know is it viable to use Pathfinding, is it viable to use non-pathfinding? Are there kind of significant holes in the process currently? Do these Animesh doggies have a free roaming mode, or are they just used as attachments? I think those uh, test objects may have some issues with their kind of AI to the, you know, whether whether they decide that they're trying to, you know, follow someone. They, it seems like sometimes they'll do it and sometimes they don't. Yeah, I'm not sure about that either. Yeah, I'll, uh, I want to follow up on this with the moles as well, but, um, you know, since uh, I know a lot of folks here have worked on animation in some capacity, I was... Uh, just curious what uh, what your conclusions had been. So has anyone tried to make a free roaming non pathfinding? Uh, character and either either animesh or using some other technique, you know, alpha flipping or whatever. Oh, bye rider. Well, free, free roaming in the sense of not being an attachment, um, you know, whatever decisions they're using to uh, decide where to move.
I assume these are some sort of alpha flipping object that has a land impact of 0 0.001 and you know, 5 million polygons. Sigh. Not that bad, okay. Twenty K is not bad. Yeah, the the rebuild stuff you have to do because of the alpha flipping is probably a more serious issue than the you know geometric complexity itself. What land, Im land impact are they trying to hit for their uh, alpha cycling things? Well, I'll be uh, revisiting a lot of this stuff with Arctan, but I don't have a don't have a time for that. A lot of other things going on first, I think. Yeah, we did do some uh, cost measurements of. You know, skeletons that were rigged to almost nothing, like there was a, you know, cube with a, um, you know, eight triangles or something. And there is an impact. It's not like you can just have an arbitrary number of skeletons running around doing their thing without, uh, without it affecting performance. Yes, off of flipping is undercharged. <laughs> That was the main uh, main reason. You may recall we went with um, basically triangle count technique with uh, Animesh because the stuff that was attempting to use object scale was uh, just just not uh, reckoning well with high poly count objects. But the total cost, you know, realistically, it's going to, I think you're going to be seeing different aspects of the system loaded to the, you know, the skeletons are going to be hitting your, uh, your CPU harder and your, the, um, the, the rig meshes, the, the triangle count is going to be hitting your GPU harder. So even just trying to translate it into sort of units of time or something is uh, a little approximate. Okay. 
3 FPS, ouch. But that doesn't get worse with having the, uh, the 10 Animesh. Huh, interesting. Are they doing a lot? Are they running a lot of animations? Yeah, texture is another area where uh, we'd really like to look at it in more detail with the Arctan stuff. Currently, they affect your arc, but they don't affect your uh, land impact, right? Oh, is, uh, is Animesh out in the uh, uh, Firestorm main release at this point? Oh, cool. What's point .5 per link? I'm not sure what you mean. Every link in a link set carries a 0.5 levy. That's not specific to Animesh, is it? Okay, yeah. It'll be interesting to see what happens in the uh, you know, in the market now that there's a lot of people running around with uh, regular Firestorm release who can do this stuff too. What number for what? The actual per cost per link set or per link? Yeah, it's very likely that the the, you know, cost components for the server have changed quite a bit since those numbers were set.
Okay, well, I guess we're uh, about out of time and maybe about out of content. Anything else, uh, you know, questions or whatever before we wrap up? No, no, I we have a hard question. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess we'll see everybody. It should be next week. We've got um, next week is still this month, and we don't have a, a conflicting meeting, so it should all be good. All right. Well, thanks for coming, everybody. We'll uh, talk to you in a little bit. Thanks, Fear. Thanks, Lindens. Thanks, everyone.